Shabir Hassan Ali, who is an activist Islamic scholar. Uh, Shabir, what do you make of uh, how Mohammed bin Salman is being received officially in the UK? What does that say really about the relationship between the UK and Saudi Arabia at this time? Well, it tells me quite, tells everyone quite a lot about the, the words of Theresa May, who um, earlier this year on so-called Holocaust Memorial Day said that, you know, we must never forget where prejudice can lead. Uh, lead. And she also said that by supporting Holocaust education, we'll safeguard the memories of survivors and learn the lessons for generations to come. Now, there's a reason why I mention these. Um, because right now, Theresa May and the British government are complicit in a Holocaust in Yemen. It's, I mean, you could call it many things. Uh, some people might say a Holocaust is too, too difficult a word. But it's, it's, it's a mass genocide of people in Yemen. It's premeditated and it's with intent. It's not accidental. And uh, the British government is complicit. And that's why, you know, they, they give their man in, uh, you know, the, the, their man occupying Arabia um, the red carpet treatment. Um, unfortunately, I'm not surprised by the treatment he got. I applaud and I salute those people who came out today to protest and anyone who's been protesting against this, this war criminal because a time will come, not too long, where Theresa May and Boris Johnson and all of these people who have been promoting and supporting bin, bin Salman and the Zionists in their genocide on Yemen, their Holocaust on Yemen, where they'll be taken to a court like the one in Nuremberg and they will be um, you know, put, put behind bars for eternity. Because this is what it is. I mean, we can call it whatever we want, but they are perpetrating a holocaust of the Yemeni people. Um, this war needs to stop. And the thing, the thing that's very interesting, I don't know if, um, if, if Press TV covered it, but the Bureau of Investigative Journalism picked up on a very interesting story today that's connected to this, where you have a, uh, a member of the Foreign Commonwealth Office who has been seconded to Mr. Bin Salman's PR company in the UK that's been promoting his message. You know the message they talk about him being very, very much a reformer. I mean, wow, he's going to let women drive and, you know, he wants to have a, in inverted commas, moderate version of Islam and he wants his vision 2030 and this new city and all this sort of stuff. Whereas whenever these people um, hear the narrative of Yemen or Bahrain, or the oppression in Arabia itself at the hands of this Wahhabi Takfiri entity, um, or the fact that Daesh and Al Qaeda and Al Nusra are directly manufactured and supported constructs of bin Salman and his allies, they immediately deflect to you know the, the usual suspect, which is you know for them Iran. You know all the time Iran is the one responsible for somehow Yemen being massacred. Iran is responsible for everything. And uh, I have one thing to say to these people, that they should really be scared because if with the hematic seal they put Yemen under, if Iran, according to them, is able to get weaponry in there, then Iran must have some very advanced technology and they should be really careful. All right, Shabir, we'll leave there at that point, but of course, as always, we appreciate you taking your time and to speak to us.